Hello, this is John from cavoprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on interrupting threads in Java. So way back in um, the second tutorial in this series, we looked at how to gracefully stop a thread using a volatile Boolean flag. And that probably is the best way to terminate a thread in Java. But um, if you worked at all with multi-threading in Java, you will have come across interrupted exceptions all the time. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at what those are all about and what you can do with them. So I've got my main program set up here already, and I'm going to just create um, some code that I can run in a thread. So I'll declare a new thread um, object here, and I'll start that um, thread, and I'll put a join in to wait for it to finish. And um, I'll just handle the exception there um, by throwing it out my main. And at the start here, I'm going to just put a um, bit of text so that we know the thread started. And at the end here, I'm going to put some text so that we know that it's finished. Now to actually run something in this thread, let's have a new runnable like this. And I'll implement the public void run method. And now I want some really time consuming code to show you um, what I want to tell you about. So I'm going to create a random number generator here, which um, are always good for using up some time. And uh, I'll have a loop. So let's, and let's make the loop go from zero. I'm going to start it at um, 1 million. So I'll, I'll write this in kind of exponential scientific format. I'll write 1 capital E 6 which is 1 times 10 to the power of 6, or in other words, 1 million. So this is a big loop. And in this loop, I'm going to put something that's going to take quite a lot of time to run. I'm going to have a math.sign, and I'm going to use the return value of double, which should, should, should take a bit of time. Uh, now, actually, if I run this, it's probably going to go quite quickly. So yeah, not enough. If I increase that to seven, so 10 million iterations, you can see there's a noticeable pause. And if I bring it up to eight, I'm going to get a program that takes a little while to run there. It's going to take like a few seconds. Now, um, there's a method of um, thread called interrupt. So what I'll do is after I've started the thread, I'll just sleep for half a second to give it plenty of time to start the thread running. And then I'll call t1.interrupt. Um, and notice my, my interrupted exceptions are being thrown out of main here. So if an interrupted exception is thrown, it's going to just appear down here in the console. And if I run this, you see what happens. Basically, it's exactly the same as before. Nothing's happening because um, thread.interrupt doesn't actually stop the thread. Um, it just kind of sets a flag that um, tells the thread that it's been interrupted. And there is a thread.stop method, but that's deprecated. So we shouldn't use that anymore. And um, if you actually want to detect if your thread's been interrupted, you need to quiz the, the thread that's running and ask it if it has been interrupted. In other words, if this method has been called. And the way to do that is, um, so here we've got like a really intensive loop and we could check every time we go around the loop if the thread has been interrupted or not. And I can say thread dot current thread, which will get me the currently executing thread. And because there is only one thread um, executing at a given moment and multi-threading is implemented unless you've got two processors by um, kind of slicing up the processing time into little slices and giving each thread a little bit of time in turn. So we want to get the current running thread here. And we want to say thread.current thread um, is interrupted. And I'm going to surround that by an if. So I'll say if the current thread has been interrupted, then we can just terminate this um, loop. So I'll say um, interrupted. So we get some visual feedback there, and I'll just break out of the loop. So if I run that, um, 
Now you see um, after half a second here, the thread is interrupted and we can detect that here and we can stop. So that's really um, almost all there is to interrupted, um, interrupting threads. If you were to have, instead of this code here, if you were to have like a, a wait or a thread.sleep in here, so let's have a thread.sleep of um, like, I don't know, one millisecond every loop in iteration. And let's, let's surround that with a try catch because thread.sleep throws an interrupted exception. And here in the um, catch, I'll do a sys out. And again, I'll put interrupted. And if it's interrupted, I'll just break out of the loop. So um, once again here, if I run this after half a second, um, the thread.sleep will, will detect this, in, this call to interrupt and it will throw an interrupted exception and it will stop. Um, well, it won't, it won't stop. It will just throw an interrupted exception, which I've caught here. And then I've done a break. So, um, it's, if, if you're using, um, I'm not sure if it's really worth demonstrating in itself, but if you're using, um, a thread pool, um, thread pools have, um, a cancel method that can cancel threads before they even run, but they will also, um, they will also, uh, cause, they'll also set the interrupted kind of flag on a running thread. And again, you can check it using this mechanism. Or if you get, um, if you get a future, if you run, um, a thread using a callable and, uh, as in the last tutorial and you return a future from it, the future has a, a method, um, which is called, I can't remember, cancel or interrupt or something like that, which achieves again, exactly the same effect. But the bottom line is, if you want to see if your thread's been interrupted, then um, it's no good expecting it to interrupt running code, because it won't. Um, it, the only thing we'll do is set this internal flag, and then you need to check um, somehow, like here, um, if the thread has been interrupted, unless you've got a wait or a sleep, which will pick that interrupted up, um, the interrupted status up automatically. So that's it. That's all for this tutorial. Um, this code I'll put on caveofprogramming.com. And um, do join me again for the next tutorial, um, which in the next tutorial in this series on multi-threading is going to be on um, multi-threading in GUI swing apps. And it's probably going to be the last in the series, um, unless you have some other multi-threading thing that you'd like to know about, in which case do uh, leave me a comment or send me a message. Okay, so that's it for this time. And until next time, happy coding.